um, sometimes you just want to don't want to show your face and that that's legit um when i was in a lot of zoom meetings sometimes you know like i let my face be seen and sometimes i didn't um make sure that you mute yourself when somebody else is talking because there can be some weird sounds um that just show up um you'll probably hear my dogs barking sometimes and at the bottom of the page if you click on chat you can send messages to the class so if you have a question you can ask it there. Alternatively, you can raise your hand by clicking on raise hand. Um, Ivana did that already. And so I knew that she had something to say. Um, who am I? That is, um, that is an important question. Um, some little, a little bit about myself. Um, See, I went to, it's so weird. In a face-to-face -face class, I kind of know what that to say when I come to this part of a first day lecture. I'm a little bit about myself. I, I went to community college. In fact, it took me six years to get out of community college. And um, I went to Mesa College um, for a lot of reasons. One reason is I got married when I was 18. I know, crazy. And I just, we didn't have any money and I couldn't afford to go to school, but I wanted to go to school. And um, it took me a long time to finish at community college because I didn't know what I wanted to do. And that's okay. Also, after three years in community, four years in community college, I had a baby. And then, yeah, and then I changed my major and then I changed it back. It's long story. My point is, and I always have a point, even though I'm going to seem a little random, is my point is community college matters. Um, community college, um, I don't know if I would have been able to just go to a four-year college with my situation. I didn't have enough money. Um, I had kids. Um, I had to work before I had kids. And community college gave me a lot of flexibility. And um, so, um, yeah, my other dog, this is Diego, and um, both of them are rescues, and they are both, I love them very much. Um, I believe in community colleges, and that's the point I wanted to make. I teach part-time here at Southwestern. I teach full-time at San Diego State. And I, part of my full time is I work in their writing center as one of the assistant directors. And so I believe in writing centers. I believe in writing. I believe that writing is essential. Um, it's important that we know how to communicate, that we are able to share ideas with other people. And um, that's why I chose when I went back to grad school because I wanted to teach in community colleges, I chose to major in um, a writing discipline so that I could teach writing because I felt like if I could help students write, then I could help them do whatever it was that they wanted to do. And I believe writing is hard, but that it's worthwhile. Um, to overcome those difficulties. I believe that no matter who you are as a writer, you always have more to learn. And I'm still learning more about how to communicate through my writing. And so we will have a semester, a successful semester if you start where you are and you add to your knowledge. And that's what I'm here for. I'm here to support you, to coach you, to encourage you, and as you write, I will support you and help you and encourage you to grow as a writer. So here's what I want to do is I want to work you into breakout rooms. And um, here's what I want you to um, share with your breakout rooms is your name, your where you went to high school last year or the job you were working whatever is most relevant i know some of you have been out of school for a while so high school you know like none of you care what high school i went to because yeah 
And, um, but you might have been working, so that might be more relevant. Your major, if you declared a major or a possible major, I know two of you plan on being nurses. And so you've been working in the medical field and um, you're back at school because you want to be nurses. And then one interesting or not so interesting thing about you. Okay, so I hope you've jotted that down so you can remember those things. I'm gonna put you into um, breakout rooms. Um, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms of three people. And so you'll have about three minutes to share that. And then later on, I'm gonna ask you those questions again. Um, actually, I'm gonna put you into breakout rooms of four people. So, so your name, um, where you went to high school or what you've been doing most recently, um, your possible major and something interesting or not interesting. Like somebody, oh my gosh, one time I asked that question and a woman shared that she had 26 brothers and sisters. Crazy. Um, or not crazy. I mean, for her, it was, for her, this was just normal. Um, so yeah, here we go. Breakout rooms. Um, automatic into, there's 21 of us. So let's do six breakout rooms. All right. There you go. Okay. <sighs> Few more people wandering back in. Eventually they'll get pushed back into this room, but that's that's good. few more. So I'm going to ask you, what was the most interesting thing that you learned about somebody in your group? Something interesting. Um, so just say their name and what you learned. Um, uh, but go ahead and raise your hand first. Nothing interesting. Um, Ezekiel. Go ahead and unmute yourself and, and you can share. Uh, well, uh, Yire, um, the girl that was in my group, she's, um, her major is biology and she wants to become a vet. And I thought that was a really good goal. Oh, very cool, Yire. Um, Somebody else, um, raise your hand. There's a little raise hand icon, um, or if you've got your image on, um, Esteban, oh, he's back in the waiting. He's he'll be back in just a moment. Um, anybody else? Something exciting you learned? Interesting? Anybody else? Okay, so Ivana's microphone isn't working. All right, let's uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. Oops. Um, I will just get better and better. It's been a it's been a while since I was the host on Okay. And let's minimize this to just speaker view. So this is English 115. The technical title is College Composition, Reading Analytically and um, Writing. 
And composition is composing something, writing something. Reading analytically, um, what does it mean to read analytically? Um, anybody? Um, anybody want to share what it means to read analytically? Okay. It's a little weird because we can't see each other. By the way, in a real class, like a face-to-face, -face, this is a real class. In a face-to-face -face class, I just call on people. But on the first day of class on Zoom, that just seems a little aggressive. So I will not do that. Uh, I know. It's like, what is Zoom class etiquette? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Um, reading analytically, when we analyze something, we're breaking it down to look at something more deeply. Um, to understand what's below the surface. And so we can read something to know what it says, to catch a story, but we can also read more deeply to understand what an author is doing, what an author's purpose is, um, how the author is communicating the purpose. And so we're going to read analytically. So nothing is just going to be, we're going to summarize what they say. We're going to try and understand why they're saying it and what the author's purpose is. And then we're going to write a variety of essays. Um, you're going to do textual analysis. You're going to write analytically. You're going to do lots of logic and research. Um, information literacy. How do you know something is true? Um, yeah, you've, and you're going to draft, revise, edit, all of those things. So I've got this funky picture here. You're going to see it a lot. Um, I pulled it off of Google Images. And to me, this picture represents analysis. So this time I'm going to put you in breakout rooms and I want you to share the same stuff, your name, your high school last year or job, whatever's relevant, your major, an interesting thing or not so interesting thing. Um, interesting things might include, um, for example, I have eaten camel. Yes, I was at the Carnivore Cafe in Nairobi and I ate camel. I also had ostrich, which is also strange, but maybe less strange than camel. So um, uh, think of something unique. Um, anyways. And then I want you as a group to think about why did I choose this picture to represent the word analyze, okay? So stop share, turn into breakout rooms. Again, um, Diego does not like that, um, Diego does not like um, that I am trying to do things on Zoom. He wants me only to hold him. So, all right, you're going to be in groups again. You're going to meet new people. And here we go. Okay, 
So everybody's back. Um, same question. Um, what was something interesting that you learned about somebody? Um, Ezekiel? Well, Joseph Gonzalez was in my, my room and he said that he was born in Hawaii. I thought that oh. was cool, yeah. Yeah, uh, Joseph, how long did you live in Hawaii? Uh, I lived probably for like three years and then I moved back to Cali and I've been so, here. So do you remember it at all? Oh yeah, I do. Like here and there, like little bits, but not all of it. Um, yeah, I, when I was little, um, yeah, we moved there when I was six. And so I got to live there for three years. It was so fun to live in Hawaii. Yeah, yeah it was nice. <laughs> Um, but California is not so bad. I have definitely no complaints here. Um, well, I was complaining about the humidity last week, but um, that's a whole other thing. Something else interesting that you learned about a classmate. Something fun or less fun. Okay, now here comes here comes the, the trickier question. Um, what, we have this funky image. Um, let me put it back up there. So here's this image. Why, why did I choose this image to represent analysis? Um, just go ahead and unmute yourself and share. I guess it could be knowledge as, as in the person is like, you know, she's thinking and breaking down all the ideas and trying to analyze what ever is going on and what she's analyzing, he or she. Um, yeah, yeah, it's really hard to know. Um, anybody else, Ezekiel, um, go ahead and you can share too. Sure, our group was discussing it and um, Joseph and I kind of agreed that it really represents, it looks like it re represents, you know, a very deep thing. You're really thinking deeply. You can see that there are gears working together in the person's mind that are helping it, helping the person get a deeper understanding of what the author is trying to communicate. Uh, we could see like exhaust coming from the mind as well that might represent like um, the, their imagination of what they think um, that the author is communicating. Oh, good, good. Um, can anybody add anything to that? I didn't even see the exhaust, but um, anything else that you can add to this? Um, if you look at the facial features, one of them has a very furrowed brow while the other one has a concerned brow. And I don't know if anybody noticed that, but it just makes me feel like when you're analyzing something, it can cause confusion as well, like, as well as, um, concern as to not understanding it or putting like the pieces together. Really good observation. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, I like that a lot, but the, that confusion is okay it's it's okay to not know that's part of the process you know those gears moving um anybody else um have observations yeah i was just going to agree with adriana um about the face facial expression if you look inside the picture you can see that there's actually like two faces um i think that represents as like the second one being her inner self like her thoughts or self-conscious, maybe. Yeah, it could be. Um, any other thoughts on this one? Um, I noticed that there's like arrows pointing into like a bunch of different directions. So it could be like the thought process is like going like really crazy, but like even then like it's still, like you're not just coming up with like one product you're like thinking about a bunch of different things and like connecting whatever you're learning to like something else. 
great observation um, because when we're analyzing, we're weaving in or the word is synthesizing um, multiple ideas. You know, like we all have experiences, observations, we all have different things and we don't analyze in a vacuum. Um, we add in what we already know. Um, all of that is part of it. Any other thoughts? I, I, I want to applaud you. Your groups came up with really deep ways to analyze this picture of analysis. Um, one other thing that I added is I saw the two faces as maybe two different people. Um, and the idea that you know, like somebody with the different thought processes, different experiences might interpret things differently than somebody else. Um, and, I, and I think all of that is very, very important, um, very, very important when um, we're talking about analysis because there is no single answer. There are a lot of ways to interpret things. Um, there may be confusion, there may be concern, but, and the deeper we go, the more we learn. You know, like we can analyze on the surface or we can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And I love how so many of you looked at individual types of things, specific elements of that picture, specific elements, the gears, the arrows, the exhaust, um, the eyebrows, the eyes, the mouth, um, and you were bringing meaning in from the very specific things you saw. And that's when analysis is at its best, when we can focus on a specific aspect, uh, a word, a combination of words, um, an image, a color, all of those are saying something. And if we ask, we can learn something more. So most of your content, you know, like we've got an hour on here today, maybe an hour. I wanted, I told you I wanted to keep these quick. Um, that means not that you only have an hour of class when there was four hours of class scheduled, but it means that most of the work you do will be on Canvas. So a few things you're gonna think about this week is the first one is why writing is hard. And the second one, oh, there's three things, it's just not on the PowerPoint. The second one is literacy. And when we think of literacy, we tend to think about reading and writing, which is one definition, it's probably a primary definition of literacy, but I want to extend that to multiliteracy. So if reading and writing enable us to understand and learn about a specific part of the world or, and to communicate that, multiliteracy suggests that there's multiple ways to read and communicate about the world. And you'll notice in this tree, if we were to analyze this, we would see other things, other types of literacies. Um, I don't want to break up into breakout rooms again, but tell me some literacies that you see. You can raise your hand or you can just unmute yourself briefly and tell me literacies you see. Let's take a minute and think. 
there are so many things in this image. Okay, Ezekiel. Oh, one thing I, I noticed on the tree was the music note, music. Music can communicate something to us, you know, through the lyrics of the song, through the, you know, the, the tune. Uh, it gives you a deeper understanding on something, so it can be a form of literacy. Um, yeah, definitely. And the musical literacy can include how to make music, how to communicate through music. Um, there are various levels of that musical literacy. So another type of literacy that you see. You can raise your hand using the little icon or you can just unmute yourself. Ivana? Um, I saw the little film film reel and I that would qualify as media literacy and honestly media is such a such a wide distribution of knowing so yeah oh yeah absolutely um and communicating through media read learning how to read media how to understand it how to navigate it but also how to communicate through it again different levels of literacy there um another one somebody else Okay, then I will just move to the next slide. We're gonna be talking about this a lot. Um, that's why the subtitle for my course is Literacy and Anything Extra We Know. Um, here we've got this analysis, um, we've got literacy, and we've got all the other literacies. Um, the anything extra we know. Those of you who have worked in the medical field for a little while, you have learned a lot about medical literacy. Um, a tutor at our writing center at San Diego State has pancreatitis and he was um, treating his pain with Tylenol. Um, and he didn't know that if you take too much Tylenol, that you can actually damage your literacy, your liver. And so he didn't have that literacy and he did damage his liver um, and it's permanent damage. Um, so in top of the pancreatitis, he also has liver damage, um, super serious. So not having certain literacies can hurt us sometimes. Having literacies can empower us. If you have some kind of civic literacy, then you know how to register to vote and you know how to vote and you know how to speak to your representatives and advocate for change. And so that kind of literacy can actually help you. Um, and so we're gonna talk about a lot of different literacies, not just reading, and writing. Um, along those lines, you are going to write a literacy narrative. We're going to start out reading some literacy narratives, and then you will write one. And you'll work in groups to give feedback to each other um, so that your literacy narrative um, can you can communicate about a literacy that you have and you can communicate in a meaningful way to somebody else. You're also going to write a research essay about a specific literacy. And you're going to write a rhetorical analysis of readings and your own writing. 
um, and, and you're going to write a lot of other small assignments just to give you practice writing. Because I believe that we learn a lot about writing by writing and by getting feedback on your writing. And so I'm going to be giving you a lot of feedback on the writing. Sometimes your writing is just going to be for me to see. And sometimes, like on the discussion boards, um, you will be writing and your audience is the class. And so that's important to know because you might write differently um, if you know you're just writing to me. You might share some things that you don't want to share with the rest of the class. Um, you might, um, I hope you will write conversationally when you're writing just to me and the reflections, but in your essays, you might write a little more formally, depending on the type of writing that we're doing. So I want to introduce a couple of words to you, synchronous and asynchronous. Um, you might have become familiar with this if you were in high school last year and you changed um, to online or remote learning abruptly when all the campuses closed. Synchronous and asynchronous come from some Latin roots. Um, syn, S-Y-N, means same, and chron or chronos means time. So synchronous classes or classes in which students meet at the same time. So when we had face-to-face -face classes at Southwestern College, all our classes met at the same time. Um, a, the Latin root A means not, which means, so asynchronous means classes are classes which students do not meet at the same time. So we've got some kind of combination, a hybrid, if you will. Sometimes we're gonna meet synchronously in Zoom like we did today. And sometimes we're gonna work asynchronously which means that you're going to engage with students about materials and course concepts on Canvas. I should have said students and me about material and course concepts on Canvas. Um, I learned actually yesterday that there was a name for what we're trying to do. I thought I made it up, but no, I did not. There's actually a name for it and it's Chrono Hybrid. So, Sometimes the time is the same, we're working together, and sometimes the time is different. And there will be, um, we have 30 students in this class, 21 of you are on this video right now, or you're meeting, 21 of you are meeting together right now. And um, that means we have nine other students who are not here. I'm recording this, and I will post it on Canvas because I know sometimes internet is unreliable, sometimes students are sharing computers and it's not their turn to have the computer. And so um, I don't want to disadvantage anybody. And so I'm going to turn this into a video. And if you ever can't be here for the Zoom meeting, you'll still have access to everything we do. Um, however, you'll probably be asked to um, do a short writing to show that you watch the video. So um, next slide. We're gonna follow the same schedule um, every single week. So on Sundays, we have a day off. On Mondays, um, you'll start working through the asynchronous, not at the same time, Canvas content tent. And Tuesday, you can work on that. That way, when we meet together on Wednesdays, after today, we will always meet on Wednesdays. Um, you'll be ready. You'll have a good idea of what we're gonna discuss on Wednesday. But any homework is due at 11.59 p.m. You'll have another homework assignment, a, a discussion board. Most of the time, it'll just be a discussion board. And it's due on Thursdays at 11.59. Nothing is due on Friday. And the rest of the week's homework is due 
on Saturday evening. Now, obviously, you can work ahead. Um, you can finish things earlier. And the next week's Canvas page will open up to you on Saturdays when you finish these, this week's assignments. Any questions about the schedule? Just go ahead and raise your hand um, or unmute yourself and ask away. So we're only meeting on Zoom once a week? Yes. Okay. And so Mondays uh, during class time, we would just be working on assignments that is on Canvas? Yes. Okay. An online class, if you've already read the syllabus, is um, we have less content that's synchronous, but it's the same content and you can work through it. Um, there are so many complications with using computers or being on Zoom. I know several of you have, you know, like, even though you're here and you're working hard and, you know, like you made that effort, sometimes your computer's just going out and that happens. And so, um, so I want to give these options and you'll see, you'll see what that content is like. You'll see that sometimes I actually explain things better. Um, on, on when I'm talking on Canvas than I do in person, yeah. Um, other questions about the schedule? Yeah, Ezekiel? I was gonna ask, so for that week, all the modules will be open for the entire week? Yes. Okay, good, all right. It's cause like Saturday wouldn't work for me, so I'm just gonna do it during the week, I think. Yeah, um, so you, you definitely want to work ahead. Yeah. And my advice is start working on Monday. The, the Canvas page will open up on Saturday, but if you start working on Monday, um, you could have everything done by Thursday. Okay. And, and it won't be stressful for you. Um, I know that that is what I did when I was taking Canvas classes. I tried to work ahead just because I was so afraid that I would forget what day of the week it was and miss an assignment and not pass all the certifications I was getting. And um, yeah, I was getting paid for my classes, but I took them not for the money, but just because I wanted to know more. Um, and I was afraid I would miss something. Um, other questions about the schedule? So I have one other thing, and this is on our Canvas page. Um, I realized that we have a really early start time. It's 7.15, and we're scheduled to meet from 7.15 to 9.20. And I thought, hmm, hypothetically, we might not have to meet at 7.15. Um, I'm an early person. I already told you I woke up at 4.30 this morning without an alarm, um, but I know not all of you are morning people. So I put this survey on Canvas, and I'll let our class decide. Do we want to start at 7.15, which is our regularly scheduled start time? Do we want to push it back to 8 o'clock? Do we want to push it back to 8.15? And you can also click on, it does not matter to me, I will probably watch the video. So um, we'll let the class decide what time we meet. Again, it's only going to be for about an hour, um, but we have a two hour window to work within, okay? So, um, some other things. Um, if you are registered with Disability Support Services, if you're a student athlete, if you're going to miss class due to religious holidays, please email me and let me know early. Um, if Canvas is confusing to you, if something's happening that could affect your schoolwork, 
please let me know quickly. Um, I told you, we are living in a very strange time. Um, I think most of us know somebody who has become sick from COVID. Um, sometimes those sicknesses last a few days. Um, I have a friend who lives in Connecticut and she got sick in March and she's still sick. She's what you call one of them, they've called, they've named a long hauler where she's sick, she recover, and then she's sick again. And when she's sick, she can hardly think, move, walk down to get the mail. And so um, I do know that there are things going on that may affect you. So please, please communicate to me. I want to um, stop share and I want to take us to um, our Canvas site. And um, this is our Canvas site. And there's a lot of things on Canvas. Um, I think some of you um, have used Canvas before. And for some of you, it's brand new. And so um, let me introduce to you some features. Obviously, all the announcements are available. This over here um, will tell you a lot of different things, what you can go to, um, the announcements, you can read them. That way you can also read them from our homepage. You can access the syllabus and you can access all the modules. Um, here's the getting started module. And here's the week one module, which opened up right before we started class. You do need to do the getting started module. And the best way to go through modules is to, um, waiting, waiting, waiting for it to open up. Oh, there we go. Um, there's me um, when I was in Cosmel. Um, I haven't been anywhere except for Palm Springs this summer. So I picked favorite places and you'll see some of my favorite places on my green screen background. Um, uh, right now, um, you can see over here, um, my where I am right now, but not really, is Baltimore. Um, anyways, I, I love to travel. And the best way to go through them is just page by page. Down at the bottom, you can click next, and next, and next. Um, and that way, if you just go through it sequentially, you won't miss any assignments. And so that's a good way to do it. Um, let's go back to the modules. And um, here's week one. And um, here's where the video will go. Of course, it's not there yet. And here's the survey. And you don't have to go anywhere for this. You can just click on it. And we'll just go through it. OK? Any questions about Canvas? There's a to-do list on the right-hand side, and um, our Zoom classroom link is right there. How to contact me is here, and here's my virtual office link. And um, you'll be able to um, make an appointment um, by clicking on this link. So, any questions about Canvas? Okay, so back to the PowerPoint. Um, yeah, office hours. Office hours are an opportunity to get clarity on assignments, to ask questions you didn't feel comfortable asking in class, to get to know me and my expectations if you're not sure what I'm asking for. A one-on-one -on -one conversation can clarify a lot of things. Um, also, I can read and give you feedback on your writing. 
Sometimes professors may seem intimidating, but we really are just human beings. Um, I teach because I like students um, and I value your success. So come see me, see your other professors. And um, yeah, that is all I have this morning. I told you I'd keep you to an hour, um, and it's an hour. So um, any other questions before we wrap up? All right, then that's it for today. Um, shoot me emails, um, go ahead and start getting started, get started. Go ahead and start on the Getting Started module and on this week's module. And yeah, it's all good. I am going to oh, um, Yes. Uh, so do we, so if we start the modules and will it automatically count as like submitted once we finish them? Yeah, when you, when you complete something, um, when you complete something and submit it, I get notified that it's done and I read it. I give you feedback. Some of you have already submitted some things and you've, all, I mean, like not a lot, but I've responded and said, Hey, thanks. I think, I think Ezekiel, you picked up, you got a few things and I said, thanks Ezekiel. And, um, probably exclamation point. Um, I would encourage you to load, if you have a smartphone, I would encourage you to put the Canvas app on your smartphone so you'll get those notifications that I've graded your work um, pretty quickly. And you'll see um, your grades, you'll see my feedback. Um, I think that you'll find you get to know me better in an online class than you would in a face-to-face -face class because I will give you way more feedback. Um, and actually I get to know my students better in online classes than I do in face-to-face -face classes. So, any other questions? Okay, thank you so much for showing up and for being so participatory and have a great rest of your day and enjoy your other classes. Bye-bye. Bye, have a good day. All right, bye, thank you.